Hello and welcome to International News Tonight, the only station to bring the latest news at the fastest time. I'm your host, Jackson Rieger, and I'm joined here with Justin Newbeck. That is correct. All the latest news at the fastest time. Today we have some pretty big news. The Korean War has ended. I repeat, the Korean War has ended. It has taken a little over three years, but what had to appear to bring it to an end was an armistice signed in July 23rd and current year 1953. Now, if we take... Take it back to the very start of the war. The date was June 25th, 1950, when the Korean Communist Army had taken it upon themselves to cross the 38th parallel and invade the non-communist South Korea, forcing them back. Yes, the current leader, which is Kim the Second Sung, had the army invade South Korea. There had seemed to be about 100,000 soldiers, give or take a couple thousand, that took part in this invasion with the Alliance of China. With the South being pinned against the wall, in need of help, the United States have come to South Korea's aid. With that being said, we will now present these short clips on the attack of South Korea. so shocking absolutely insane now we will take a closer look into some battle scenes our reporter had captioned a few short days after the battle thank you justin we are at the scene of the battle just a couple days after the incident it looks to be an absolute disaster as you can see jared are there any craters at the site i've heard that there were some common tactics used from world war ii especially the use of air control teams dropping multiple bombs as an airstrike yes actually from what we can see from here this may be some craters from the airstrikes it looks to be some minor craters. If we keep following this path, we will see even larger craters. In fact, from what I can see here is a different set of tracks. And Jared, can you take a closer look at what you found for us and all the people at home? Yes, what we have found here is the tracks from the tanks. These go on for miles. If you look at the imprints, these were no laughing matters. As you could tell, there is a constant pattern throughout the entire path. This means that they were even having a continuous track. Very different when they have wheels. Having these tracks would mean that they have more control over different climates, especially over rough terrain. These distribute e enough weight throughout the vehicle over a large contact area. Decreasing ground pressure, these will cause the vehicles are much less li likely to get stuck in the mud. Soft ground and snow, it's obvious that these, that with this amount of firepower and troops, South Korea had no chance at all. Yes, that's what we had left off before on the first th on the first thing airing. Now it has been around three years since we last visited the site, and we will see what has changed. Thank you, Justin. It, and yes, we are here at the scene of the battle once again. An absolute tragedy has occurred where I am standing right now. As we can see, not a, ma a massive amount of changes. However, if we come take a closer look, we have uncovered some trenches, these were sources of cover while taking gunfire, especially useful weapons that used a lot of massive amount of ammunition. These weapons could go for hundreds of rounds without having to reload. However, as we can see with a huge pile of rubble out here in the distance, there were some trenches that were exposed to either airstrikes or a manually thrown set of charges that had detonated. We can see darkened pieces of rubble could mean the trench was burned from a flamethrower or a simple toss of a Molotov. I would assume that with three years that all the recent footprints and tracks would have been covered already. Yes, it would appear that way. As of right now, everything has pretty much cleared. Footprints and tank tracks are no longer visible. All there could be left right now are still some craters, depending if they made a very big impact on the surface and some partial scraps used from weaponry. The plant life hours seem to grow back a bit, and we could see some green grow growing back in the later future. What are you feeling as you're standing there where North and South Korea had fought in such a tenuous battle? Very strange. Thousands of soldiers has, have crossed over the 38th parallel to fight the South Koreans. All the heavy artillery used on this very spot, the tanks, airstrikes, and more. It is very different watching it than actually taking in a view of the scene. Certainly life-changing. I do think you have a big point. Everything can be said with ease, but nothing is more convincing than actually taking an actual view of the landscape. 
With that being said, we will be right back after the break, so don't go anywhere. Good morning to you guys. I'm Logan Gunny, and today I have the weather for you. Uh, to start things off in the Korean Peninsula, we're going to head over to the city of Seoul. Seoul right now is 46 degrees with 79% humidity. Uh, Seoul is very important in the Korean War because it's right next to the small town of in -uk. in uk is where uh, the Marines landed to come fight in the Korean War. I do have to give you a warning if you uh, are planning to visit in uk Right now there's going to be some light showers and then towards the end of the week there's going to be some heavy thunder. Now if we head things over to the 30th parallel, uh, right now it is 45 degrees with 54% humidity. Uh, this is the 30th parallel which uh, we call the DMZ zone. Uh, this is where uh, the north invaded the south and now represents or divides the north and the south. If we head to the capital of North Korea right now, which is Pyongyang, it is 48 degrees with 64% humidity. If we head things all the way up towards the north, we have the Yalu River. The Yalu River um, splits Korea and China. Uh, here, hundreds of Chinese soldiers crossed to come fight in the Korean War. Right now, in the Yalu River, it is 46 degrees with 32% humidity. Uh, throughout the week, I am going to recommend you guys wear coats, uh, long jackets, pants with no holes in them because it's going to be cold with the light breeze coming in through the Korean Peninsula. Uh, for now, that's all I have for the weather. Uh, we'll take it back to the station. Thank you. Thank you, Gunny, for the updates on the weather. And now we'll be back after this short commercial. Have you had an unfortunate loss to the North Koreans? Family, friends, close or relatives? I would want you to know that I am truly sorry for your loss. Personally, I have too lost someone. He was a great soldier, but when it comes down to the surprise ambush attacks, there wasn't any chance for him. Here's a short clip of how it unfolded. Unchi kappa. Shabalava di kong kong. Saba, saba. Inta, inta. These guns never fail. I got murder on my mind. This is why we are showing these weapons and why all you viewers out there should consider purchasing them. They are currently for sale for a cheap price of $13. Make sure the North Koreans never infiltrate your territory and protect those close to you. This is International News and we are back. In case you missed it, June 25th, 1950, the North Korean Communist Army took it upon themselves to cross the 38th parallel into South Korea, forcing them back. The current leader Kim had the army of Bay South Korea. There have seemed to be about 100,000 soldiers that took part in this invasion with the alliance of China. With that being said, we will now present these short clips on the attack of South Korea. It's only about 20 miles from Incheon to Seoul, paved highway all the way. But it took us a week of hard fighting to make the trip. Finally, though, our amphibious gear, crammed full of rock and American Marines, started massing up at the Han River across from Seoul. It was time to retake the city. The softening up process got underway. <laughs> Taking it further back down the North Korea war, the Chinese and the North Korean forces are recapturing Seoul. This was bad news for the South Koreans once again. It was January 1951. It was known as the third battle for Seoul. Needless to say, they succeed in recapturing Seoul. Here are a few short clips on what the battle looked like. The battle for Seoul was rough. 10,000 communist troops garrisoned every building and street junction with orders to fight to the death. A great many did.
Now with that clip out of the way, we can conclude this three-year bloody and frustrating war. What had brought the war to an end was an armistice with was agreed upon the United States, the People's Republic of China and South Korea. As a result, a new border was drawn between the North and the South Korea. That is very much true. The, they gave South Korea some additional territory and demilitarized the zone between the two nations. The armistice ended America's first experiment with the Cold War concept of limited war. A new border between North and South Korea was drawn, which gave South Korea some additional territory and demilitarized the zone between the two nations. The war cost the lives of millions of Koreans and Chinese, as well as over 50,000 Americans. It had been a frustrating war for Americans who were used to forcing the unconditional surrender. As government's officials were well aware, however, such actions would like have prompted World War III. We definitely do not want that to happen.